All right, I did a video a couple days ago talking about the difference between Pixlr and Photoshop. And right after I posted it, someone had said, oh yeah, if you use Pixlr, you should use Photopia because that's way better. And I'd never heard of it before. In fact, when I had Googled like free editors, nothing had even like shown up for it originally. And so now that I've kind of learned my lesson and I've looked, thank you very much for the suggestion because Photopia um, really does uh, make a bit of a difference. And so we're going to compare all three of them real quick, and I'm going to let you be the judge of which one you feel like you want to use. Um, of course, I'm going to put a little bit of my opinion in there and some things that I found out as I've been doing this um, that are problems that come up with um, each one of the programs. So uh, first things first, uh, we're going to start with, of course, the base. We're going to go and open up a Photoshop so you can kind of see what you're looking at when you look at Photoshop. All right, so once you get um, Photoshop started, uh, of course you get your typical options. You create your picture, and then once you want um, a video or a picture, um, an image in here, uh, I'm going to bring in something from my Iceland trip. I don't know what that is. It's going to be a surprise. What is it? It's thinking. So I per, oh, it's the same one that I'm using with my other picture. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm using actually the same picture accidentally that I'm using for Photopia. And so what I use for a camera is a uh, Sony a seven three. And so they actually use ARWs, but they're like, uh, they're raw, they're raw images, but they're like Sony's raw. So sometimes they aren't readable by a lot of different, like, uh, other computers and stuff. So I can't actually view them on, um, PCs. I can't view my raw pictures. I have to bring them in somewhere. So when you bring in a raw picture in Photoshop, it automatically brings you into this editing bar so you can edit it first. Now let's compare that to, um, uh, first, uh, Pixlr. Now the reason why I'm bringing it first into Pixlr is because you can't, it's, it's not possible. You cannot bring ARWs into it. It can't read the files. So as soon as I try and bring it in, it won't do it. So that's easy. You can't bring in uh, these raw files into Pixlr, but you can bring them into Photopia. Now, um, the other thing, I'm going to take a step back real quick. When you're using uh, Photopia, one thing that you uh, that I found is logging in is way easier. By that, you don't need to. Now, they do want you to, um, like, there is a paid version of it if you want. And what the paid version does is it will allow you to have more history go back. So, like, for instance, if you want to step back, I think you can only step back 30 times um, in the free version. But it'll go up to 60 in the paid version. And then there is um, other option. There's something else that you get to with the paid version. Um, so, yeah, so there is a paid version of it. Um, so when you bring, uh, the other thing is when you're going into Pixlr, so this is back in Pixlr, you have to log in. And something that was also mentioned to me is if you are a student and you're using a Chromebook, you can only use your school's email on that Chromebook. And there is a problem there because a lot of schools are blocking. You can't get any outside emails. So you can't use Pixlr if you're using a school's Chromebook. So that becomes another issue where Photopia, you don't have to worry about that because it isn't a login. You just are um, using it like it pops up and you can put your picture in. All right. So uh, here's that same picture so you can adjust the tint and the warmth. I'm not working very hard on this. I'm just bringing it in. As you can see when you are using this, if we're comparing it to Photoshop, you can see there is a lot more options for Photoshop's raw bring in, but we're talking about a free versus paid uh, software here. So once you're done, you can open it and it will bring it in just like it would in Photoshop. So we're going to do the same thing with Photoshop so you can see it as well. And it's bring, preparing the smart object. Now, something else that I want to show too is when you bring in and you're going to start a new file, if you go new, this is something that I think Photopia does really well uh, that Photoshop doesn't. If you can see here, they're automatic 
options here shows you you can have your what a Twitter cover would be, a YouTube cover, what your header of a Facebook page a cover would be. Um, and so it'll automatically make sure that your pixels are the right size so that when you bring it in, you know that you're working in the right size, which I think is a really clever idea and more places should actually do that. All right, uh, with Photoshop, it does have those options too. You just have to search for it and you have to know what you're looking for. Um, all right, so now as you can see here are your options you can recognize the shapes are pretty much the same what i'm going to do is i'm going to focus on these guys so for editing um usually if you go into image you get adjustments and just like in photoshop you have them in exactly the same area if you've been using your editing and again that is just going to adjust right onto the picture. It's not a layer on top of the picture. The other thing that a lot of people look for is um, the options for filters. Now again, it's got all almost all the exact same filter options as Photoshop. As you can see, I haven't placed my objects, so these are all grayed out yet, but that, those are your filter options um, in images. It's cut off. I have my screen a little bit smaller, my recording screen a little bit smaller, so I'm sorry you can't see the whole thing. But as you can see, this is pretty much what it looks like back and forth from those to those. So uh, that was a, was a really great uh, comparison that I, I felt like. And so again, I'm just as far as a free option that's browser based, meaning it's not going to take up room on your desktop. It's just on your compute on your, as soon as you Google Photopia, it's going to pop up and you'll be able to use it there. So it's not going to bog down your computer the same way that, um, that, that, uh, Photoshop will Photoshop works a little bit slower that way. Um, however, if you lose connection with internet, I haven't lost connection with internet yet because um, I've been lucky today, but if I don't know what would happen. So just kind of keep that in mind. If your internet cuts out as you're working, you want might you might lose something. The other downside to this is because um, I didn't have to make an account or whatever. Like currently I don't have to make an account. I haven't tried to save it yet. So if I go to save, I can export as a JPEG. I can do all those. I can save as a PSD. So I could actually bring this into Photoshop if I really wanted to and work on it later. But um, I don't know if I am, like if I log out or whatever, this might all have to happen in one session. So for instance, if you're working on a really big Photoshop project, you might not be able to go back and work on it every day because you will have, it'll have timed out. Now, that being said, I have turned off my, com like shut my computer and then opened it up and it's still available and like my computer's gone to sleep. And so it doesn't automatically forget everything you've done. But um, unless you make an account, I think that you can't work on the same project from like day to day or log out and then come it up. Or if it, your c computer crashes, you might lose stuff. So just kind of keep that in mind is kind of a potential downside of it, where of course, when you're logging into Photopia, you have, um, you've automatic, you've had to make an account. And so if I go to home, I can actually see the three images that I've worked on. As you can see, this one is still listed as active and I can still work on it. But the main reason why Photopia was a great one is because you don't have to log in and do the, 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 process and so that might be an issue so that was kind of the comparison of just an overlook of it now as far as my opinion goes on it I think for a free like web-based option Photopia is really great and it's um, it's very a very close comparison to Photoshop if you're very used to using Photoshop and you want something that will work just about the same it is a very good uh, comparison for a free option. If you have Photoshop, of course, use it. Like I'm not saying throw away your Photoshop. I'm not saying delete your subscription. I'm just saying if you have, um, if you don't have access to it, these are really good other options for you. Um, as far as Pixlr goes, I think it looks nice. I think it looks clean. I think that it's easy to use. And I think that um, if 
you have always struggled with Photoshop and you do want to have just a little bit different option, that is a really great comparison. And um, I honestly, if it's well edited and it looks nice, I would accept anything from any one of these different editing softwares because editing doesn't necessarily have to be about the software you're using. Sometimes it's about the quality of the work you're producing. Sometimes it's always about the quality of work that you're producing. If you can fool me, then awesome. Oh, one last thing that I wanted to mention too is Photopia you can use on your phone. And as you can see, I've got it up on the side here. Um, it'll work on your phone, but it's very clunky. I think it could work pretty good on a browser on an iPad, but because your phone's so small and it's not necessarily made for that size, it's hard to navigate and hard to work with. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're working. Um, if you have a phone and you wanted to use a browser-based one, it will, but it will be a pain in your neck. So just kind of be aware of that. As far as phone usage, I'd say I'd give it a three out of 10, but it still would work. All right, so that's my last little two cents about that one.